Hi, yes, it's just another quick video on this rubidium standard and frequency counter because Nitro 2001 on the uh, forum, EV blog forum, a user on there asked what happens if we feed the rubidium reference external input up the frequency counter's own clacker? Well, that's exactly what I got. Would it read precisely 10? Well, ta-da, let's try it. Yes, it does. All I'm doing is feeding the 10 megahertz uh, output of my rubidium standard into the external input. You can see it says external reference there. And I've set it to um, 12 digit mode. And yes, it is absolutely bang on. And as I mentioned in the uh, forum post, it doesn't have to be a rubidium. So let's try a few variations of this. It doesn't matter what frequency you put in there, it assumes in, in the external reference, it assumes that it's precisely a 10 megahertz reference. So that's why we're reading precisely 10. And um, you also want to know what happens if we add some extra coax on here. I don't have a huge amount of coax, but I'll add a little bit more just to add a little bit of delay from the external input. As you can see, I've got one here. It's maybe a meter long and it doesn't matter a rat's bum. And what I've done here is added another uh, meter on there. So we've got about two meters of uh, coax there. And uh, because I've got it set to 12 digit mode, the gate time is, uh, I don't exactly know how long it is. I'm timing it now. It's been uh, 22 seconds already and uh, still hasn't done it, but we'll come back when it's uh, done and see what we get. And I mentioned on the forum that you could be possibly plus minus one uh, least significant digit out there depending on how the counter's designed, how all things are clocked and uh, stuff like that. I mean, I won't go into um, architectures of various modes of how frequency counter wor works right here, but come on, 50 seconds. Hey, there we go, bang on, 10 megahertz, not a problem. So instead of the uh, rubidium standard, what well, I'm going to be a bit cheeky and I'm going to uh, feed the output of the internal oscillator in here, that crappy 10 megahertz stock oscillator, to the external reference input and to the input of this. So it really is feeding up its own clacker right about now. So let me plug that in and uh, see what we get. Because we should read always precisely 10. Let's uh, wait for that to re do it we'll just go back in there and we'll select the that and we'll go back in and it'll reset and we should find it'll still be 10 even though that frequency is not spot on 10 megahertz because it just the counter assumes it is precisely absolutely without question 10 megahertz and bang there it is folks spot on precisely 10 even though it comes directly from the output here uh, from the internal counter itself, so it's feeding itself. And no, look, there's no, there's no funny business going on there, folks. It really is uh, looping back and feeding itself. There's the uh, output there, the 10 megahertz uh, crappy internal oscillator output going to the external reference uh, in there and uh, to the input. Not a problem. And while we're at it, just for a bit of fun, I thought I'd just... Uh, calibrate my old uh, Philips frequency counter here too and uh, because it's got the oven oscillator you've seen this in the uh, teardown before it's the PM9690 uh, um, 01 it's an ovenized uh, oscillator it's a uh, pretty schmick and uh, as you can see I'm not sure why the waveform out looks like uh, that out of this thing but uh, it's not the greatest um, but it does have the adjustment pot on here, so let's... It should be much finer adjustment, of course, than the other one. See, if I turn it, I'm turning multiple... This one looks like it has actually a proper trim pot in it. It feels like it has a, pro pro a proper trim pot. Of course, I've let this uh, warm up, of course. Very important when you're doing this sort of stuff, although, it, you know, it is uh, oven ovenized. Um, you still have to let it warm up, and if I keep dialing it the other way, it goes back. But yeah, much finer adjustment range than we were getting last time. And it's really, you know, we're practically bang on there. I mean, there's no movement in that waveform at all. You know, there's going to be some. There's going to be a little bit of drift in there, but uh, 
can't really see it, so it's pretty darn spot on. And for you fans of the lissagist pattern, there it is. You can see some, see a slight bit of movement on that, of course. You can see it closing in. And if we switch back to uh, the um, regular time mode, probably be able to see that drift in there as well. Yeah, very slight. I can just see that tiny little drift in there. Give it one last tweak. Ta-da! All right, what I've got now is no rubidium at all. Just using the internal oscillator, not using, the, not connected to the external. You see, there's no external uh, signal there. So just the internal oscillator out, the crappy one, into up its own orifice. There it is, and yeah, it's going to be almost spot on 10. It's that plus minus one digit I was telling you about, and of course we can go in there and. Um, increase uh, the digits on that so let's uh, it's a bloody weird operation this so let's give that say eight digits and go back there we go bang on 10 so only at that lower one uh, that lower uh, count is it actually a problem so I mean if we go right down to something like three that's pretty silly Ah, oh, there we go, 10.00. So maybe, like maybe that would had a sweet spot there that, uh, bloody hell, how do I do this again? Weird. So let's go up to four. Let's, let's try them all, shall we? There we go. Bang on. Let's try it again. Five. We're bang on again. Is it going to make a fool, fool out of us? Let's uh, try that. Six digits. And... No, we're bang on. So we were getting that one, one least significant digit uh, flip-flopping before. I think we were on seven, weren't we? We were one more than that. So let's have a look at that. Let's try them all. No. Eight digits. And uh, we're bang on again. Not a problem. So we were getting the uh, one bit uh, flip-flopping before, but now we're not. It's bang on. Gate time will take a few seconds for that. Maybe 10. I don't know. Come on. There we go. Bang on. So maybe if we actually put that back to uh, auto, for example. Oh, hang on. How do we digits? We want. Let's put it on auto, shall we? Let's try that. There we go, and we get a bit of flip-flop in there on auto mode. But we don't get that on the um, fixed uh, number of digits instead of the fixed start gate time. And let's actually set the gate time to some oddball value. I don't know, 0.914 seconds or something like that. Let's give that a go and see what happens. Nope, we are bang on. So thanks Nitro2001. I hope that uh, answered your question of what happens when... A frequency counter reads its own reference clock. Not a problem. It's bang on. Worst case, plus minus one least significant digit. If you want to discuss this, jump on over to the EEV blog forum. That's the place to do it. I won't promise there'll be no more videos on this, but you never know. <laughs> Catch you next time. Oh, by the way, I found the schematics for this thing on the Agilent website. Yes, you can just download them. So the link will be down below. Check it out if you want to see the schematics for this puppy.